Ahoy there, everyone! Welcome aboard for another deep dive into the fascinating and occasionally stinky world of life on the high seas. Today we're setting sail to explore something you probably don't think about every day. What happens to the water on a cruise ship? You may be relaxing by the pool or enjoying the buffet, but just know that behind the scenes, things are getting, well, pretty dirty. But don't worry, we've got a whole team of invisible heroes working tirelessly to keep everything running smoothly. Buckle up, because we're about to embark on a watery adventure. This ship here, with a capacity for 1,300 passengers and 800 crew, might seem like a big deal, but by today's standards, it's actually pretty small. The real giants out there are pushing up to 9,000 people. That's like squeezing the entire population of Glastonbury Festival onto one vessel. Imagine the chaos, but also the sheer number of people who need to eat, sleep, wash, and do, well, what people do on cruises. Now, for all these people to live in comfort, because, let's face it, if it wasn't comfy, no one would come back, the cruise lines have to provide some pretty basic amenities. Things like clean cabins, fresh clothes, and of course, showers and toilets. And guess what? All of those facilities rely on water. Seems simple enough, right? But the numbers? Oh boy, they start to add up. You see, the average person uses about 40 to 50 gallons of water a day. Do the math. And on a ship like this, you're looking at around 100,000 gallons of water every single day. That's about 500 tons. So let's say this ship does a classic Southampton to New York run around six days. That's almost 3,000 tons of wastewater. And no, ships don't just dump that straight into the ocean like some people think. There's actually an international convention called MARPOL, which governs marine pollution, and it says, nope, you can't just dump your sewage into the sea. So, what do they do instead? Well, we've got to gather it all up first. Think of it like collecting all the recycling in your home, except we're dealing with water here. Beneath the ship, there are ballast tanks, normally filled with seawater to keep the ship stable. But surprise, we can also fill them with wastewater. Yes, that's right. Your bath water, your toilet water, all of it gets tucked away down below. Now, we don't just toss everything together in one big pool of sludge. Oh no, ships are organized. We separate our wastewater into two main categories, gray water and black water. Black water is the more, well, intense stuff from toilets. It's the kind of thing that needs serious treatment as it's full of bacteria and, let's be honest, unpleasant surprises. Gray water, on the other hand, is the waste from showers and laundries. More like the stuff you'd collect and reuse in a composting toilet. Or to water your garden, though definitely not to drink. Okay, now the black water's in a tank, and it's time for some science magic to happen. It gets sent through a sewage treatment system. First stop, a big filter, which just skims off the large stuff. After that, it enters the aeration chamber where some very busy little bacteria are waiting to chow down on all the organic material. They need oxygen to survive, so the system pumps air in to keep the little critters happy and working overtime. These bacteria are like the unsung heroes of the ship. Without them, we'd be sunk, literally. Next up, the settlement chamber. This is like leaving your drink on the counter for too long, where the heavier bits sink to the bottom and the clearer stuff rises to the top. The heavy stuff gets sent back through the process for more digestion, while the lighter stuff, which is basically just water now, moves on to the final stage. This is where things get really fancy. The water goes through a sterilization process. It could be chlorinated like a swimming pool, or it might go through UV treatment. Either way, we're making sure the harmful bacteria are gone. After all that, we're left with water that's perfectly safe to release back into the sea. In fact, it's actually safer than some of the tap water you'd drink on land. But don't worry, we're not drinking it. We just store it in another tank until the ship is far enough out to safely discharge it. Now, gray water is a bit easier. It doesn't need all that fancy treatment. Some ships treat it along with the black water, but most just filter out the big stuff and send it off when they're far enough from land. However, some places, like Alaska, are starting to crack down on gray water discharges, so ships have to follow the rules carefully. And that, my friends, 
is how a cruise ship manages to keep all its water uh, under control. What started as something pretty unpleasant, let's call it black water, ends up as something clean enough to be released back into the sea. Isn't that wild? Next time you're aboard a cruise, just take a moment to appreciate the tiny bacteria working away in the bowels of the ship, digesting everything you throw their way. You've got your deck chairs, and they've got their tanks full of waste. It's a team effort. If you enjoyed this peek behind the scenes, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've got more fun, quirky facts coming your way every other Friday. Thanks for watching. And until next time, safe travels, smooth sailing, and hopefully clean water. Bye for now.